Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel. And wait, why am I even happy? We're going toward doomsday. The market's going to crash. The recession's going to come. We're all finished. Us little investors are going to have our money stolen away from us. But wait, 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 wait. I hear a lot of doomsday crap out there. There was a video that last week went viral. And, and viral viral because it's a stock market related video and it got over 100,000 views within a few days. If it's a stock market video on YouTube and it gets over 100,000 views, that's a viral video in my opinion. So this guy, I think it was the channel was called AmTV, gets up in front of the camera and talks for like 17 minutes about why we're going to have a 50 to 80% correction in the stock market, like a, basically a, a ridiculous stock market crash, not just a stock market crash, but a ridiculous style stock market crash. He's talking about a 50 to 80% stock market crash. This video got a massive amount of views, guys, massive amount. Now, this is nothing new to YouTube because there's actually channels dedicated to speaking about doom and gloom and doomsday's coming, and that's all they talk about all the time. Every single day, every single year, every single year they're wrong. <laughs> but eventually, like they say, even a clock, uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Even a broken clock is right twice a day. So eventually those people will be uh, correct, and they'll be like, oh, see, you know, I've been saying this for years, we're going to have a crash and whatnot, whatever. So... Today, I got like seven different points I'm going to uh, bring out to you guys that's really going to open your mind and you'll kind of realize why we probably aren't going to a recession or stock market crash anytime soon and why it doesn't have to be a stock market crash or recession anytime soon, guys, because I did a lot of research on this and I'll kind of open your minds a bit. So one of the first things is a lot of people like have this uh, a notion, like the media and, and everybody thinks like, a recession happens every seven to eight years, right? That's like what's said. Well, I kind of fact checked that, right? So this goes into point number one. In the past 34 years, 34 years, so older than me, I'm only 27. So in the past 34 years, do you know how many recessions there's been? It's been three recessions in the past 34 years. So there's only a recession about every 11.25 or 11.33 years, guys. So if you were to go just, and this is such an ignorant way of looking at things, but if you were to say, okay, well, recessions only happen every 11 years. Well, last recession was in 2009, so that means we should have a recession in around 2020, 2021. And that's a really ignorant way of looking at things, but that's how people are looking at it because people with the whole seven and eight year, that's how often we get recessions type deal. They say, oh, you know, every seven to eight years, that's when we get a recession. Well, okay, so it's been about eight years since we had a recession, so then, therefore, we're due to all of a sudden have a recession. But what, what does it matter what happened in 1800s and 1700s and the early 1900s? The, the economy was totally different. America was totally different back then. I mean, heck, uh, women didn't get to vote until, what, 1920? So women weren't even, like, treated as regular humans until, I think it was around 1920. African Americans weren't even starting to be treated as normal humans until what, 1960s when the civil rights movement happened? So that was a total different world in America. A total different world, guys. You think about how far we've come in this country, and I'm, you know, I know a lot of people from outside America watch my videos too, but I'm just speaking to Americans right now. We've come a long damn way over the past 100 years. So what happened 100 years ago is irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant to what could happen to in today's economy, guys. It's total different game. It's a total different game. A lot of the people, the jobs people do nowadays, they didn't exist or didn't even come close to existing 50, 100 years ago, guys. So it's like, it's very naive to even pay attention to, uh, you know, a recession that might have happened in 1854. Who cares? America was, like, drastically different back then, guys. So, so that's my number one point. On the last 34 years, guys, the, the at least time that actually matters to us, three recessions. Remember that. Three recessions in the last 34 years, guys. Point number two. Let's talk about the 2001 recession. That was one of those three recessions. The 2001 recession was partially to blame on two things. One was the dot-com bubble bursting in 2000. Year 2000 happened, and the dot-com 
bubble burst. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, it's basically internet stocks and anything internet related was just going absolutely insane. Valuations were pushed up to insane, uh, insane highs. There were companies that had basically no business model that had valuations in the billions of dollars, guys. No, no, no real company even behind the stock, just like an idea. And it had billion dollar valuations, guys. The NASDAQ was over 5,000 points during this dot-com bubble when it burst in 2000, right? Guess what? The NASDAQ barely is over two, or barely over 5,000 now. So it took a decade and a half just to get back to 5,000, guys. A decade and a half. That's how insane the markets went back then. So that was partial one reason, because valuations got pushed up so ridiculous on a bunch of companies that had nothing behind them. Uh, a ton of investors lost a lot of money in that dot-com when it finally burst. And uh, people that were employed in a lot of sectors around these companies that basically had no business model, they ended up losing their jobs, it affected the whole economy. And the second part of what caused that recession was the September 11th terrorist attack, a day that will live in infamy in America for probably ever. I mean, honestly, at least in probably my lifetime. It was the biggest, the biggest shocking thing to happen in America since... Uh, Pearl Harbor, which happened in the 40s, guys, the 1940s. So it was basically uh, around 60 years, roughly. Around 60 years. So you could say, well, yeah, sure, a terrorist attack can happen at any time. Uh, and if I'm talking on a mass scale. I'm talking something world-shocking, something that everybody like puts everything down and they remember forever. Like I still remember, it's been what, 16 years? I still remember watching it as a little kid in sixth grade or whatever, you know, the Twin Towers fall. And I still remember, you know, going to school that day and all we did was watch TV that day. It was the weirdest day of probably in school history. I don't even think we learned at all that day. We were just like supposed to watch TV the whole day and the events that happened and whatnot. It was really crazy. And we might even done that the next day at school. That's what I'm talking about. So if you're you're saying one of those attacks could happen, yeah, sure, that could happen, and maybe that could cause the stock market to crash. Maybe that could cause a recession. Absolutely, that can always happen. But how often does that really happen in this country? About once every 60 years. Now, that's not saying it can happen it sooner than that or something like that, but be realistic about this, guys. It's, it's very few and far between that a terrorist attack on that type of mass scale could affect the entire economy. It's got to be something ridiculous, guys. So that's always a wild card out there. That's always a wild card and always will be a wild card out there on, on something crazy could happen that's world-shocking, world-stopping type stuff, you know, where, you know, I mean, after September 11th, Everybody was scared to even travel. I don't know if you guys, you know, and you guys, some of you guys watching this might be too young to even know it. You might have been babies. You might not even have been born at that time. But everybody was scared to travel. The airlines were just a mess. Uh, the Bellagio, which was the, the most hyped and most popular hotel here in Vegas at that time, right? They had to shut down two of the wings of the hotel because no one was coming there. No one was coming to the Bellagio. They had to shut it down for like two weeks because it was just a waste of electricity and waste of people there, guys. So think about that. Think about that, guys. It's, you know, number three here, guys, the 2007 to 2009 recession. That was the most recent recession we had. Well, that recession was the longest we've had as far as the length of time, how long that recession went on for. It was the longest recession we had in this country since the 1960-1961 recession. That's how bad that recession was. So sometimes when you have a recession that bad, it takes a long time to kind of get over it. And then it takes, a, it might be a long time before you get another one because that one was so severe and it was so bad. So maybe even the 11 year number doesn't have to work for us guys because that was such a severe recession. It was it was arguably the worst recession we had in this country since maybe the Great Depression, which wasn't even a recession, that was a depression. So, you know, and a lot of people argue that it was the worst since then. So, take that into account. That was the longest recession in American history since 1960, guys. So it was a severe one. So it takes a long time to kind of get over those. And that's why we had sluggish growth coming out of 2010, 2011, 2012. And then now it's, I mean, now we're in 2017 and it's really just, you know, starting to get a little better and a little better, but it's nothing fast growth. We have not been fast growth coming out of it. Coming out of a recession that severe, it's hard to just go in the snap of a finger and just phew, everything shoots up, guys. So understand that. That's point number three. Point number four. 
The uh, 2000, let's talk about the 2007, 2009 recession again. That was mainly a recession because of subprime mortgage lending that had went absolutely parabolic, guys. It had gotten so ridiculous in the United States of America as far as the subprime you know, mortgage lending, guys. And it caused huge financial institutions to go completely bankrupt and become uh, basically nothing overnight. Overnight, guys. Do we have anything right now in this country that is anything close to that? In my opinion, no. It was such a crazy time in this country, guys. It was such a crazy time because you had people buying a second, a third house who shouldn't even probably own one house. But they could just get the financing for it because it was so ridiculous easy to get financing. And the housing prices just kept going up. So it was like you were stupid if you did not go and take another loan out and get another house and get another house and get another house, guys. So that was a major recession caused by that. And you got to ask yourself, do we have anything going on in our economy right now that is that insane that it would cause the entire economy to crash like that? You know, where it's something like that, guys, where, you know, the whole auto sector had to get bailed out for, for crying out loud, guys, because things had gotten that ridiculous. Do we have anything in this country right now? That is that crazy? In my opinion, no. Do we have some things that are a little insane in my opinion? Yes, absolutely. But do we have anything that was close to the subprime mortgage uh, crisis we had going on? Absolutely not. Not in my opinion, at least, guys. So that's another factor to take into account in judging you know, when you're going to be set up for a recession. That was number four. Number five. The S&P 500 has forward PEs of under 18 right now. They're like 17.4, 17.5 or something like that. So when the S&P 5, and that's forward PEs, when the S&P 500 really goes above a 20 forward PE, that's when you start to have to really worry about market valuations. Around a 17 forward PE on the S&P 500, that's about a fair price. That's about a fair price. It's surely not undervalued. It's surely not overvalued. You get overvalued if you get a 20 PE plus. So basically, the stock market right now right now would need to be 10 to 12 percent higher to for me to really say things are overvalued now if the market goes up 10 to 12 percent this over the course of this year right for the rest of the year then obviously those forward PEs will come back down again because then it's a new year so the forward and new forward PEs come in guys so the right now right now right now the market would have to be 10 to 12 percent higher than it is currently for we for us to really have an overvalued s p 500 and even if it's a four pe of a 20 that's still not super overvalued super overvalued is when you start getting into 25 30 type range guys so we're fairly priced on s p 500 which is a, a kind of a good way of judging how the overall market's priced right now we're fairly priced we're surely not undervalued like we were in 2010 2011 2012 but we're surely not overvalued at all, guys. So that's something to take into account there. Number six here, guys. Wages in the United States have just begun to go up. Wages in the United States have been near stagnation for almost a decade now, guys. Wages have just now begun to really you know, start going up the last few months and whatnot. So we have a lot to gain once those wages do start to come up. When those wages do start to come up over the next couple of years, that will push the entire economy more likely upward rather than downward, guys, because there's less employees to hire out there, which means uh, employers, they have to pay a, a steeper wage to get employees through the door, which is good for the overall consumer, which is good for overall people in general, guys, when you when you kind of force the companies to hire for a little, little higher rate, because generally speaking, especially big companies, they can flat out afford to pay a little more money. But a little more money... To them, it doesn't mean nearly as much as a little bit more money to you and I and the little guys out there, guys. So that's something to really take into account. The wages have just started to go up in this country, and that's a really good sign. Really good sign for the overall economy. Number seven, we have an administration in office now, the Trump administration. They call it Trumponomics, right? This is an administration that's number one focus is economy. 
Some would argue maybe their number one focus is immigration with how much talk they do about illegal immigration and, you know, the Middle East countries and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which we're not even going to touch on. But really the Trump administration's economy first. I mean, if you've ever heard his speeches and whatnot, he talks a lot about the economy and he, you know, talks a lot about how he, he, bad he thinks the economy is or whatever under Obama and whatnot. So bottom line is the number one focus of the Trump administration is a strong economy in doing everything possible to make sure the economy is as strong as possible. If there's one if there's one thing that the Trump administration would not want to be known for, it's known for putting us in a recession or, or damaging us economically, guys. So they're gonna do the kind of things that will push up an economy and push up a stock market, cut taxes on people. Will you cut taxes on you know the regular people? They probably are gonna go out and spend more or save more or, or put that money toward the stock market as something which would raise stock prices, right? Cut money on corporations. When you cut the tax rates on corporations, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to be able to hire more people if they want or put more money in plants if they want. Or they can buy back their own stock with that extra money in savings, things like that, guys. Or pay out more in dividends, which ends up in everybody's pockets who owns that stock. So that's the kind of stuff we're talking about here, guys. So they're going to do every growth hack in the books, probably, this administration over the time, how the next four to eight years, depending on how long they're in office. They're going to do every growth hack out there to try to push up the economy. Now, will those things be good for America in the long term? That's a whole other debate. But the, regardless, in the short term, those type of those type of tactics, they definitely work in pushing up an economy and getting a growth hack in the short term, guys. So all this being told, I would say there's less, less than a 5% chance we have a recession or any type of stock market crash in 2017. Now, by the way, a stock market crash, for you guys that don't know, stock market crash is really when the market's down 20, 30, 40%. A market correction is when the market like goes down 5, 10, 15%. That's a market correction. That's kind of like natural sometimes for market corrections. I've seen tons of market corrections in my eight, nine years of being in the stock market, guys. I've seen so many market corrections. That's a normal part of the market. Now, if it happens in a day, the market goes down 10% or 15% in a day. That's a stock market crash. That's a whole different ballgame. But if that happens over the course of a couple weeks or a couple months or whatever, it's just a market correction, guys. So that's not what I'm talking about. Stock market crash, 20, 30, 40% type numbers, you know, and a recession. I would say less than a 5% chance we have one in 2017. I won't make my predictions yet for 2018 and 19 because it's too far off. It's too far off for me to realistically be able to gauge, you know, what if this happens, what if this happens. And honestly, the only reason why I even have it near a 5% chance is honestly because of what we talked about with like terror attacks. You never know what could happen with something like that. Something major, something major that happens like that that could maybe push us into a recession. If it wasn't for that that risk factor out there, I would probably have it closer to a 1%, honestly, guys. So it's very unrealistic for us to have a recession or stock market crash in 2017. It's always possible, but very, very, very unlikely. 2018, who knows? We'll have to, you know, see how this year kind of goes along and see how, you know, if the administration actually does get tax rates to fall and those kinds of things and how that does it boost the economy or hurt the economy. It should boost it, but we'll see, guys. So we'll make my predictions on 2018 at some other time. But for 2017, in my opinion, I don't see much happening out there, guys, that would, uh, you know, end us, put it that way. So I hope this kind of enlightened you guys and kind of made you think about, you know, those doom and gloom videos and maybe not be as scared because I get a lot of comments in the comment section about, you know, oh, the market's going to crash and this and that. And I see all those comments all the time and I see the channels that are exist out there that are just doom and gloom focused. And I should do a test on this channel. I should do a test. I should release one video that says, Stock market's going to go up 50% in the next year. I'll do a video like that, and I should do another video that says stock market is going to crash 50% within the next year. And we'll see which video does better. I can 100% guarantee you that the video that would do better is the doom and gloom video because doom and gloom scares people. It scares people. It gets people it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose all my money. I got to watch this video right here. Doom and gloom sells, guys. The media knows this. A lot of YouTubers know this. That's why there's a lot of stock market channels built around just selling doom and gloom and the market's going to crash and buy gold and, and hide the money under your mattress and all this, guys. They know doom and gloom sells. When you make people scared, that's a very powerful thing. And when people get scared, they watch more often. Financial networks, 
like financial channels that are on TV, their ratings go up a lot when the market's doing a market correction or when it's crashing, guys. The, their ratings go way up. And when the market's actually doing really good like it is right now, their ratings actually go down significantly, guys, because people feel like, oh, it's nothing to watch. It's just the uh, market just keeps going up. There's really nothing to watch about it. But when the market's like crashing or a big market correction or a recession's about to come or something, there's a lot of fear in the market. Ratings are like insane because everybody's like, oh, I gotta watch what's the latest news on such and such situation. So it's crazy, guys. It's just the way the world works. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that thumbs up button if you did. If you just came across this video and not subscribed yet, you may want to. We talk personal finance on the channel. I'm an actual business owner. I give away a ton of my entrepreneur type tips. And the last subject we talk about is the stock market, which we talk about the most of anything on this channel. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day. Day.